How's it going boys? Welcome back to a brand new video and today we're gonna be doing none other than Necrophos guide. And you know, the reason why I play Necrophos a lot is because this is the only hero that's an intel hero that I'm actually good at. As you know, I play strength heroes and agi heroes. Because intel heroes actually require something called skill, which is something that most people don't have. But the thing about Quap and I um, mean <laughs> Necrophos from the difference of like Quap and you know Storm and any intel hero really is that he doesn't require any skill. The only other two heroes that don't require skill are Zeus and Wind Ranger. Yeah, that's about it. So the reason why Necro requires no skill is because this hero, if you really understand how Necrophos works, you will understand what makes him strong and what makes him absolutely broken in some scenarios. He used to be even more broken when Heartstopper Aura was straight up like not magical damage. It was just like pure uh, HP removal. That was broken as fuck because that means that Pipe and like heroes who have high HP, so any strength hero in the game, will just instantly die to Necro and there's nothing they can do about it. But they didn't nerf that, but still, Necro still does about the same shit and he is broken and I'm going to teach you how to do that. So the thing about Necro you have to understand is that Necro is good. Well, first we're going to talk about what heroes Necros are good against. So Necro is good against heroes such as like any strength heroes really. So we're talking about Axe, we're talking about Underlord, we're talking about uh, Centaur, where are they? Tidehunter, Bristolback, uh, any hero that's really tanky but also doesn't really burst you, right? Like Underlord is never going to kill Necro because Necro heals so much. He heals from his passive, he heals from his Q, and Necro buys shit like Greaves that heals him even more. So he's just not going to kill him because he just doesn't have enough damage. And uh, the fact that the only reason why Necro kills him is because Heartstopper Aura is a thing. And I'm going to show you guys how broken this is. So uh, heroes that Necro are bad against are heroes with high burst and heroes that generally like kill you really quickly with a lot of burst. So like Lina right and uh let's say storm very very like fast uh, movement speed anti-mage obviously because anti-mage counters any intel hero um also because ghost route is like just amps up any magic damage so this spell is useless against heroes like and uh like lena right per se or lion so uh, let's go through the general skill build of Necro before anything else. So, general skill build as Necro is that you want to go something like this. Uh, before, you used to take the Heartstopper Aura. You know, there's nothing wrong with taking Heartstopper Aura until they made it so that Heartstopper Aura literally doesn't, like... Well, actually, no, I take that back. Heartstopper Aura is shit. You never get this for, uh at like level one because yeah you do get healing per kill on the creeps but this is just way better because you have a full mana once you start off the game right so you want to be using it and also this helps you secure range creeps and it also is like your type of harass so the way how you want to use this is once you get a level one what you want to do is essentially this so let's say there's an enemy here and you're hitting this creep right you're about to kill the creep you want to use your hard stopper aura I mean your death pulse as you hit the enemy you always want to do it and this is like the range the range is not really far so you don't want to stand too far away because it's not going to work right you want to stand in the range of it so you might want to walk up on top of the creep like this and also another thing is that if the creep is about to die and they're trying to last hit it, you can actually heal it and make them uh miss the last hit which is also like a tactic and by the way you never get ghost shroud ever like until level five or level six sometimes i skip it completely because the thing about necro is that once you get two points in death pulse uh and you get like heart stopper aura what ends up happening is that two points in heart stopper aura and two points in death pulse is already very strong and once you get three points you're essentially healing 100 hp for absolutely no reason and you're gonna be denying creeps and hitting creeps right and the thing is if the enemy is trying to do the same thing as you if they hit you, just hit them back and use your death pulse because you're going to gain health and they're going to lose health, right? And that's a very big uh, difference. Like you're healing and they're losing. 
And also, if they try to last hit with you, just do the same thing. Try to get the last hits because you heal from last hits. They don't. And they are losing HP when they are standing near you to get last hits. So they're just slowly dying away, right? And you can pop in like a right click once or twice. And you can like get some uh, death pulses in. And this is super effective. That The way how Necro wins the lane is not really by like killing them like uh like uh, like zoning them out like a huskar or like let's say a viper does he doesn't really burst people well he, until level six what he does is that he tries to play the efficiency game he tries to last hit every creep and what you want to do is you just want to stay here and last hit all the creeps and get all the nice so you're healing right they're hitting you but you're like a dk in the sense that you don't really give a shit because you're healing you're getting mana and once you use your q you damage them and you heal and level 6, almost always get your uh, scythe. The only time you don't get your scythe is if you there's no way for you to kill people. But that's generally not a problem because Necro plus any support or position 4 roamer can probably kill the enemy mid-hero. There's only a select few that you cannot kill. I don't know, maybe like a Quap, let's say. Like Necro actually counters the fuck out of Quap because he heals way too much and Quap can't do enough damage. Like the tick damage from her Q doesn't do enough to a Necro. Compared to like a Razor, right? Like Razor doesn't heal, Razor just dies to the dagger and he's if he's slow he's fucked. Necro don't really care. So I like to max out Death Pulse first because this is your harass and farming ability. Like you can actually farm jungle pretty efficiently with this spell. It skills with damage, healing, cooldown, everything. The only thing is that it goes up in mana, but that's that. And generally now you kinda wanna get one point in Ghost Shroud just because it's a value point, right? It is a slow. It heals you more and by now you probably have a wand so you're gonna get some wand charges and if you always use your wand after you go shroud by the way so if you use go shroud and then you have to use death pulse afterwards with wand that's how you get the max max uh healing because it it actually increases your healing by 75 percent so also you want to do this when using greaves as well never just like heal and then use that uh What's it called? Ghost Shroud. Like, pretty sure Wand plus Death Pulse gets you close to full HP. I'm pretty sure. I'm not 100% sure about this. But you get the idea, boys. I'm not even going to test it out. But just trust me on this. If you have 21 charges plus Ghost Shroud with uh, Death Pulse, you are probably getting close to full HP, if anything. It's, it's pretty damn broken, if you ask me. Um, Max your Heart Stop Aura. This is also your farming item. This is your Sustain. Like, once you get to this level, basically people have to gank you. Because you're just going to sustain lane forever. If you're playing off lane Necro, then you definitely don't have a problem. Like, you're zoning the enemy carry away. Unless if it's an anti-mage. Yeah, that's about it. And if the carry can kill you somehow. Which, not many carries. Because heroes who do kill you are like the troll warlords and ursas. And Necro counters the fuck out of them with Ghost Shroud. Uh, and just like, chipping them down and just killing them with Reaper Scythe. Uh, Anti-Mage kind of counters you because if he steals your mana, you're kind of fucked. What other carries? Maybe like a... Necro actually counters PL. Like Necro actually counters almost all the carries. Like Juggernaut he counters because Ghost Shroud, right? Uh, Spectre he counters because Reaper Scythe. Uh, Naga, PL. Like if you didn't know, Ghost Shroud is actually... I mean Death Pulse is a broken ass ability. Like the thing about Necro is that people underestimate his AoE damage. Right, Necro is an AoE damage hero. Heartstop Aura is AoE, Death Pulse is AoE. Necro actually counters the fuck out of Brood Mother because what Necro can do is that Brood has low stats, so you just click him. And it, if you can get your Death Pulse off on the spiders and they stay within you for a little bit, they literally all die and you heal to full HP. And once Brood gets low enough, you just scythe him. Like, there's actually nothing Brood can do against you, right? That's the same for PL. And you can make Radiance too, so that even fucks them even harder, so. That's the power of Necro. Uh, the thing that counters... Uh, nothing counters... Even like these physical damage heroes, they don't really counter Necro. For carries, the only carries that really counter Necro are like Razor carry, but no one plays that anymore. Anti-Mage is a big one. Drow Ranger. And... Maybe Morphling. Actually, no. Morphling... Nah, Morphling doesn't... Because Morphling... Can, you can kill Morphling very easily. That's about it. Maybe Ricky. Yeah, but that has to be a good Ricky. 
But you get the point. Like, Necro is pretty good offlane. Uh, the thing about Necro that you really have to understand is that you cannot play too aggressive early game. If you fucking die to the Ursa once or twice, if you die to the Drow Ranger a couple times in the early game, you're fucked. Like, once you're behind, yeah, you can catch up, but you're making the game so hard for yourself. So, sometimes it's even worth it to just sit in lane and be a complete fucking pussy. And if your support leaves you, just sit in the trees and do nothing. Like, it's actually fine. Because as long as you're not feeding away levels and, like, you're just chilling in lane. If your support is feeding, tell them to fuck off and just, like, play your own game. Because most of the time, you're, do you're gonna be doing fine if you just sit in lane and do absolutely nothing. Because the enemy carry is gonna get farm, yada yada yada. But as long as you're on the same XP level, you're getting XP. And you're soaking some, like, one or two last hits or something like that. Sooner or later, once you get level 6, level 7, you can sustain yourself enough to the point where you can dominate the lane and they have to go jungle. And now you can either push your tower, or you can just sit back, farm it up, grab your greaves, grab your pipe, and just like completely shit stomp the enemy team because you're a necrophos with a like a early uh, 15 minute, 20 minute greaves or something like that, you know? So just never fuck up your own game. That's like the trickiest part about necro. You're not strong level 1, guys. You basically want to wait it out and up until like level 5 or 6, that's your power spike, level 7. You gotta have patience when you play Necro, man. Like that's the biggest part. People fuck up their own Necro game when they do too aggressively. But yeah, the rest is pretty common. Max your Ghost Shroud all every time it's available. Um, Aghanims, it used to be like a go-to item in Necro, but now I'm going to explain Aghanims in a bit, but... Now, uh, almost go strength. I'll tell you guys why. Strength, uh, Death Ball's heal is good, but Ghost Shroud, if you're winning, honestly, Ghost Shroud is super fucking broken. This is like what? Uh, 50% slow, basically. That's broken as hell, man. You're catching up to people. Uh, regen reduction is pretty fucking shit because the only way you die is getting bursted by as Necro, so you need the magic res. And Heart Stop or Aura always. So. This is basically why you want these talents, guys. I will explain right now. The way how you win, what makes Necro strong, is not by doing damage with your right clicks. No, 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 no. It's not by using your uh, Reaper Scythe. It's by staying the fuck alive, boys. Like, this is... Like, the way how you play Necro is being alive. Because the way, the way that you're alive makes you... Just everyone's just gonna die around you. Because you're gonna buy stuff like Radiance, you're gonna buy stuff like Greaves, you're gonna buy stuff like Blade Mail, you're gonna buy Shivas, you're gonna buy Pipes, you're gonna buy all of that shit, right? And this is all items that helps you stay alive, because you just want to stay alive in the middle of a fight. And sometimes if I'm feeling really psycho, I will even go a fucking Shadow Blade. Yeah, I will go Shadow Blade, because I just want to stand in the middle of the fights. If you guys don't understand how Necro works, if you're in the middle of a fight, and if the enemies don't burst you down within the first, like, let's say, couple seconds, you're probably just gonna kill everyone. And that's the thing about Necro, like... Look at- all these guys are just dying because I'm just staying alive right here. And that's pretty broken, if you ask me. So, essentially, if they're- if the enemies are not focusing you right away, if you can manage to not get bursted in the first couple seconds, like, this is why sometimes I don't like to go in first as Necro, and once you pop your Shivas, you know, go Shroud it up, Greaves it up, Pipe it up, like, start healing using your wand and shit, and they're not bursting you right away, man, they're gonna die. People are dying near you. Like, the more HP they have, the faster they die. Look how much- this- this dummy target is just gonna die. Like, all of these, uh, heroes are just dying by being near me. That's it. I'm literally not doing anything. And you're doing AoE aura damage. So if you can get this on 5 people with your Radiance, man, you are winning the fight for sure. Trust me on this. The enemy team is just going to be losing HP for absolutely no reason. And that's how you actually win as Necro. You win fights, you kill people by surviving on Necro. That You have to understand that. You do not win. You do not kill people by right-clicking them, death-pulsing them, Ulting them? No, 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 no. That's not how you play Necro. You play Necro by building tanky as fuck items. This is why you never go Dagon unless you're feeling kind of autistic and you just don't really care about the game. I mean, you could go Dagon and then, you know, Dagon it up. Sometimes I do go Dagon like, like, like this. Oop. Oh, wait. Oops. 
The combo is essentially Dagon plus a Scythe, right? But this is very ineffective because it makes you squishy as fuck. I'll tell you the chance, the times where you do buy Dagon. Dagon is actually viable sometimes. Radiance is always good, you know, healing, more damage, more AoE, everything. And this is even more necessary because of how Heartstop Aura got nerfed. But then again, you have to get this if you're winning, right? If you're losing, you can't get this. And you only get this if the enemy has a, what's it called, PL, right? Or Naga, or some kind of illusion hero, like Broodmother with summons. Or else you don't get this. Shadow Blade is very situational, is if people are bursting you, you know. Uh, Linkings is good against like single target spells like Doom. Uh, I'll say Lotus Orb is almost always better though because you are an off laner or a mid laner and it gives you armor, something you lack as an Necro. Uh, what else is there? Octane Core is nice because it heals you even more. You can literally heal by just existing here, guys. Like you're healing right now. Everything that you do heals more, less cooldown, everything, right? Uh, Scythe is generally for when you need catch Shivas. All right, that's a little bit too loud. Shivas is actually super good against like Meepo, right? Meepo is good against uh, because you know attack speed slow, movement speed slow, um, and heal reduction. So it's good against heroes like Alchemist, um, you know Meepo, PL. Don't underestimate Shivas, man. Like, PL is attacking a lot slower, so he's going to summon illusions a lot slower. Same with Meepo. And also, they're going to be healing a lot less. Especially with Meepo with his passive lifesteal. Um, what else is there? Um, Aghanims. You know, Aghanims is always, like, a good item to go. Because I, the way how Aghanims work is that... You're basically Ghost Shrouding infinitely. And once you, once you Ghost Shroud in the middle of the fights... And this is especially good if they don't have any magic burst... Like, let's say their mid heroes are like, uh, I don't know, Wind Ranger plus like fucking Ursa or PA, and they don't build a, uh, what's it called, Nullifier, or you can just get a BKB. Uh, actually, no, BKB doesn't work. BKB only works if they have all magic damage, guys. Because Ghost Shroud and BKB does not work at the same time, if you didn't know. If you press BKB and you Ghost Shroud, it doesn't do anything at all. So, most of the time, just don't go BKB, go p max out on the uh, magic damage. And for Nullifier, you can either go Lincolns or just like fucking, uh, I don't know. Nullifier is a little bit tricky there. It does, Nullifier actually fucks Necro in the ass, but that's why you get a Shadow Blade. Kappa. And just don't get Nullifiered. Nice. So, the thing about Ghost Shroud is that once you're doing this, everyone's dying, boys. Everyone's literally fucking dying. And it's basically like a no cooldown if you have any kind of, uh, if you have some kind of like item like this. Right. Actually, let me see if is there a cooldown. No, there's actually straight up no cooldown. No, no, there is a cooldown. Okay, there's a two second cooldown. Never mind. But you get the point, boys. So, uh, back to what I was saying. Uh, one sometime is even legit to get a ghost scepter. I don't really recommend veil. That's kind of edgy. Uh, ghost scepter. Don't get. Any, oh, four staff too. Four staff and Yules. Don't underestimate Yules and four staff. The reason why you get four staff and Yules sometimes is because uh, the thing about four staff is that if there's like something that kills you, like let's say Drow Ranger with the Silence or uh, Slark, what you could do is just four staff your way out, and it's fine. This item actually saves you for days. Same with Yules, right? Like sometimes if you get fucking jumped, you can just use, your, use yourself and you're fine. But last time I built 4 staff for Yules was like never. Because like generally if you have to resort to these bullshit items. You're kind of losing the game anyway. You kind of want to just tank it up as Necro if you know what I mean. Manta is absolutely autistic. Never get Manta on Necro. Um, Ghost Shroud. Ghost Scepter is actually legit. And the reason why is because. If they have no magic burst. You can literally just Ghost Shroud. Walk in the middle of the fight. And then fucking Ghost Scepter. And if you can get this item before anyone goes like, uh, what's it called, nullifiers, because guess what? There's, the only heroes that will go nullifier is like a carry and a mid hero, right? But guess what, if they're playing against Necro, they're gonna need BKBs. They're gonna need shit like, uh, you know, sh uh, Blink Dagger, Shadow Blades, uh, Abyssal Blades, like they're gonna need other shit too, right? 
they're not just gonna go they might even go battle fury for example they're not gonna go like nullify a first item a lot of heroes might go nullify like third or fifth or sixth item so you're pretty much good for a majority of the game and you just won't die so ghost scepter is not to actually not to be underrated it could be really good in some situations and last but not least i'm gonna talk about dagons so the way how you use dagon is very simple is if there's a tembersaw mid or if there's a hero yeah like tembersaw mid who has high armor low magic res and a hero that basically you have to burst and if you don't burst him he's just not gonna die right so if i'm up against a tembersaw mid sometimes i just rush a dagon because the thing about dagon is that value dagon at level one does a lot of damage guys like if you don't know how dagon skills it basically starts with 400 damage and it only uh and once you get it it only upgrades by 100 damage each time so that's not a lot so get a value dagon rush a dagon like fast and then with your scythe basically what this allows you to do is that the timber can never show up in lane again because if he shows up with like slightly low hp and he's standing within heartstop world click him like once and go shroud him like do this and then he has to back off because if he doesn't next thing you know he's fucking dead yeah that's it that's why so yeah that that's basically essentially it the reason why you rush dagons and uh i think that's about it neutral items you know obviously king optic any faded brooch is nice jelly is really nice tier one items is kind of just normal the best neutral items for necro tier 2 is uh definitely bracer because well not bracer but like bracer for the um what's it called bracer for the fact that you can uh why am i not getting picking this up damn it okay whatever bracer is nice on necro because like you, you usually people think you go on intel but sometimes you go on strength because you need magic res the best two are either the essence rain because if you press ghost route and you go this you heal a shit ton and also nether shawl because who cares if you have no armor if you ghost shroud like no one's gonna have a nullifier right unless if they have like a necronomicon like lichen that purges your thing you're fine because you're not dying to magic damage if you have this and more magic damage too which is nice uh tier three the good ones are like titan silver Oh, the best one here. Quickening Charm is not bad, but the, my favorite one is Spider Legs. Like, Necro has a problem getting kited, actually. He can die. But if you have Spider Legs, man, oh boy, you're running like a fucking speedy boy. You, you're not dying anytime soon. Trust me. I don't have boost right now, but... Yeah, you're not dying anytime soon, boys. You are not dying. You're, you're, you're gonna be running away. You're gonna be juking them out. Walking top of cliffs, healing up. Man, I don't know how many times Spider Legs have saved me on Necro. Because Necro has a small... Uh, he has an innate problem with slow movement speed. What else is there? Uh, the better ones are Spell Prism. Timeless Relic is probably the best one. Illusionary Cape is also very good because you can send it out. And it, the Radiance and everything works on everything. And that's about it. These items you don't need to talk about. Because obviously, you're never going to get to this point. If you do, Mirror Shield is fucking broken on Necro uh x machine this is not bad fallen sky is good any of these are really good except for like this but yeah that's essentially it boys that kind of took a i i explained a lot there man that's a lot of knowledge to take in if you guys enjoyed the video uh check out the twitch check out the discord check out the patreon check out the anything and everything boys and i will see you guys in the next one man hope you guys enjoyed peace